So I'll call the meeting to order at seven o'clock on uh, December 5th, Monday, December 5th. Uh, the meeting this week is going to be a non-warrant signing meeting, so there are no warrants to sign. So the first item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of last week's meeting. Now, can we approve them without John? Sure, yeah. sure. We've we'll, got two. We have two. You can so, do anything you need to sounds do. Sounds good. So, have you read the minutes? Yeah, I read right. through them. They look good. So, can we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion. Okay. I guess I have to second it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, all in favor? Yep. Me too. So, we can call that unanimous. Uh, the second item on our agenda is meetings attended by board members. So do you have any meetings, Bob? I did not respond to you. So, so I, I did have some, and, and I do always, I, I view this as an interesting time to talk about the meetings that we all go to because it's a big part of uh, what, how we learn stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one meeting we had, well, and, and as John always says, I'll say that we're taping this by Dan from FCAT is taping the show and it'll probably be available on Tuesday. If you're watching it, it's probably gonna be by Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow, it'll be up on the web and you can see it at uh, either on YouTube, if you go to the FCAT channel, or you can go to the FCAT webpage and get a link to it there. So, so one of the meetings we had this week was our FCAT board meeting, which uh, uh, is, anybody is invited if you want to come, but it's, you know, they're somewhat uneventful. FCAT is in the process of trying to decide whether it wants to move to a new location other than South Deerfield. And so, and, and there, there are not many places available that are suitable, uh, and there are a couple places we're looking at. So. Um, I went to an interesting meeting on Friday that I'll refer to as the Modern Wood Heat uh, it meeting. Um, it was given by FERCOG. We had, uh, it started off in the FERCOG conference room, in the Old Fort Transit Center conference room, with some people coming down from Vermont talking about uh, the transition from oil to largely pellet or chip um, uh, boilers, which is a, uh, uh, which Vermont has has incentive funds, and Massachusetts has similar incentive funds. And so, as schools are approaching 30 or so years in their school boilers, many of the schools up there are switching to pellet boilers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the pellets are available from up in New Hampshire. Uh, there may there are some pellet storage locations and delivery locations right down here in Massachusetts, but there's no big pellet manufacturing processes here in Ma in Massachusetts. Um, on a per unit heat basis, they cost about the same as oil, but they're locally sourced and they're considered renewable. So the state is promoting them. Um, they give them grants, and they they give grants to do that. Um, so then we, uh, we looked at the pellet boiler that, that heats the transit center, and then we looked at a pellet boiler that heats an apartment in Montague. And we went and we looked at the whole farm, not because they have a pellet boiler, they do a lot of their heat with big slabs of wood, but, uh, but Jay Healy is a very interesting character, so it was fun to spend an hour with Jay Healy and looking at how he manages his woodlot up there. And then we went, the most interesting was we then spent an hour looking at the new pellet boiler in the Charlemont Elementary School. And they've just um, re added a, 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 a some small pellet boilers that heat, heat the school most of the year, supplemented by oil in the very coldest nights. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're tiny, they require almost no maintenance. Uh, they're completely automatic, the pellets are, are dumped into a large silo that they have next to the school that would look very familiar to a lot of folks here in Conway. Um, then they're blown in by a vacuum system right into the boilers, wow. nobody handles them. Uh, the only maintenance is about once a week, you have to empty some ashes out of a little ash bin down at the bottom of the boilers. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it, you know, I don't know how long our boilers will last, but we're approaching 30 years here yeah. in Conway. So, so it was interesting to look at these and, and at some point, if we are considering boilers, we could go look at the one in Charlemont and, 
and talk to them. They've only just started using them this fall. Uh, the, the, they seem very enthusiastic. Nice. Uh, th then also on Friday night, there was an interesting meeting in, at McCusker's Market. Two UMass professors presented uh, their study that they've completed over r basically looking at local rivers and um, looking at aspects of the river and predicting things that would happen in the case of a flood. So all of this came after the terrible flood that occurred mm -hmm. with Hurricane Irene and was very dramatic down in Shelburne Falls, which is why they held this at McCusker's Market. They had a lot of interesting pictures of the flood mm -hmm. uh, carrying away in Brower's quilting shop yep, that got awesome. carried right down the road. But, uh, but, but so I got a copy that I will, when I finish reading it, I will, I will give to you the store here in the town or Great, if people you. want to come in and look at it, it's very, very, very readable, nice photos. Uh, it was really an excellent report. So, and it's, and it's basically looking at when there's a bend in the river, how you can predict the what will happen when there's a flood or when a river passes under a road through some kind of a, a culvert or a, under a bridge, how much water, you know, what, what, what will likely happen and how to build those bridges um, in a way that is, that, that, that uh, they won't get clogged up. There won't be a, there won't be a, a the bridge won't become a dam. Um, so anyway, it's an excellent report. And so. Uh, I, I hope we never have a flood here in Conway again, but I suspect that's not yeah, the case. Yeah, and then Saturday, there was an interesting legislative summit down in Northampton with uh, Stan Rosenberg and Peter Cocott and, uh, and, the, and another senator, Ann Gobi, came and uh, a lot of, lot of people interested in state government came and talked about uh, bills they would like to see or what changes they would like to see pushed through the legislature. We're about to start the new two-year session in the Massachusetts legislature. And so we broke up into small groups and within our group talked about questions we would like to raise to the legis legislators like Stan. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, uh, we had a, they produced a radio show that was actually broadcast today on WHAI uh, of uh, of asking these questions to the legislatures and they were answering them. So if people are interested, they can probably go to WHAI and it's probably available on a <coughs> podcast. But it was, it was an interesting day looking at uh, the kinds of things like, you know, like the transportation system increasing that we really need east-west rail as well as the north-south rail that's been added. And, uh, and different things that the region needs. It was really focused on, on things for Western Massachusetts nice. uh, as opposed to general things. So, so those were my meetings. They were all great. Did you have any time to sleep? <laughs> now and then? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and time for the Patriots game on Sunday, yeah. <laughs> uh, so citizens' concerns. Anybody? I see no citizens, so I think we're okay. Um, so we have a couple items of old business that we did last uh, from last week, and one was we looked at some budget items, and we were wondering about some of the stipends for uh, animal control. Do you want to talk about that, Tom? Yeah, I've uh, given you the uh, Council of Government's wage and salary survey for FY16, and uh, just to note that. Uh, you can ignore what it says under animal control officer. Um, what we pay as an annual salary is what's listed under dog officer, which is three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And really, the dog officer is the animal control officer. Uh, the figure that's down under animal control officer for um, for Conway is actually the animal inspector, uh, which is. Uh, a function of the Board of Health and uh, and the state uh, makes that appointment uh, on recommendation of the Board of Health. So uh, if you pretend that 350 is actually under the first column there, uh, you can compare that, as we say, with Ashfield, which uh, pays $2,000, Buckman pays $2,600. There's some 1500s. Um, uh, Shelburne is thirty six hundred. Yeah, Heath is two thousand. Uh, now, are, a lot of these towns, Tom, uh, are they 
combination animal control and dog wood in all one position? Or did, uh, did one person cover both positions? Or? As of a year ago this summer, uh, the state law changed. So that the animal control officer is the dog officer. And, and it's a, that's the dog warden. Uh, and that, yeah, and we, yeah. That, that's a, a, an artifact of the, the old language in, in Conway. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so those two positions are the same. Now, towns can split them up. So if you have one person who just wants to work with dogs and one person who wants to work with all the other animals, um, that can happen. But, we but under the law, the town the town has an animal control officer who is in charge of dogs. So that's the person who would supervise the dog officer if the dog officer were a different person. No, we have two different people in this town. No, we have one person doing that. No, doing both. Yeah. Um, that's and, the same person doing both. Yes. And doing a great job. Yes. And the animal well, inspector I, is somebody yeah. different. Board yes. Yeah. yeah. I believe that. You know, our, Dog officer or animal control officer, he does a great job, really does. Yeah. And deserves a raise. <clears throat> so, what I've done is um, uh, partly not, you know, to try to sort of buffer it. Um, I've proposed on, on this on this second sheet for the, the budget worksheet yeah. Yeah. Um, for next year, uh, I've proposed raising that to $1,600 this year. And then we can look at it, get at it again next year and see if we want to bump it up a little bit. Uh, bumping it up a lot now, I think, is is great. The other thing is, is uh, I I took down the training costs by five hundred dollars because all of the training that's provided at this time by the state is paid for. What isn't paid for is the mileage. Um, but the mileage is okay at this point, uh, what we really need to do is reimburse for the time spent at the training. And really that's a, a lot of what this, what this is going for. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is, this is a, a much more realistic budget than we've had in the past. And again, a lot of it's because there's required training. Uh, it doesn't cost anything, but you have to get there and you have to spend uh, two, two days at the training. So um, that is uh, what I've come up with for, for the proposed budget for that position. So when we look at these numbers here under annual salary, do they also, does that include mileage and training and no. these other things? They don't. No, that's the salary. Yeah. 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 Uh, or stipend, yeah. You know, really. Yeah. Uh, it's just the, the term that they use. Uh, and, and they're all... In, in small towns, they're often done by uh, an individual who has some, some expertise in, in animals. In larger towns, it's usually a position in the police department. And it's, uh, our, our uh, animal control officer actually does have a badge hmm. um, uh, granted by the state. It's a state badge. And uh, it, it is an enforcement position. You, you'll know uh, the, um, the number, the, the munis number for, the, uh, for the, the budget worksheet is 292, and the 290 series is all public safety. So it's, it's definitely part of the public safety. So this uh, 1,600 pounds is question for his wages or salary isn't really aligned with the towns similar to the country sites like Chalmont, Corain, and Asheville. Right, and where our population and is about are, the same as Asheville. This is what they paid Asheville. them this past year, not what they're going to be paying this next year. So yeah, well. yeah. So, so, so that's a good start. I, yeah. I brought it up to where Charlemont and Corain <coughs> were thinking that, well, maybe we want to be a little bit closer to Asheville right. and Buckland in the future, but for this year, let's bring it up this much, and then maybe we bring it up a little bit more next year, just to spread it out a little bit. I think that's... Reasonable, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you need a vote on that? No, I, I, these will be, this will actually be presented more formally okay. later on. Okay, good. Uh, but it's, it's a Thank heads you. up because there had been that question about what that um, was. And then the other question there was was on select board stipends. And uh, 
you have that report as well. And uh, that varies a lot too. That varies quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, it's it's easier to read on what I put in your uh, in your okay. folder. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, but uh, I think it shows you that other than one town, we're we're pretty much lower than most of the towns our size by a couple hundred dollars more. Yeah, it's. It's something that I think everyone would understand if it got bumped up a little bit, mm -hmm. if you wanted to do that. It's a tremendous commitment of time, of energy, and uh, of your attention. And uh, I don't think anybody would begrudge that. Uh, of course, some towns also do pay their, their chair more than the other uh, members. Conway doesn't, and it hasn't, and a number of other towns. Uh, including Buckland, uh, do not. Um, it's and it, it's it's not that much, uh, often, but. Uh, and even the towns so, that so pay much more than we do, nobody's getting wealthy off. No, oh, no. Off <laughs> no. these numbers. Oh no! It probably brings it up to twenty-five cents an hour. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Well, you know the. The high here is um, Irving at 3,600. Um, so, and that, that would come out to an, to you know ten thousand uh, dollars, uh, a little over ten thousand dollars for the three of you. For three collection, yeah. And uh, you know you're. So the other piece of under six now. old business was on the tree warden? Yes, uh, and I have not yet heard back. Um, I was hoping to have heard back from uh, Walter Goodrich, who had expressed interest in the yeah, position, yeah. spoke with me, spoke with the highway superintendent, and is going to talk, I think, to tree wardens in other places okay. when he gets that. Um, okay. He, he's that type of guy that thinks through his stuff. Yeah, he and he'd be excellent. And uh, he had also expressed interest in going to the annual conference of tree wardens and foresters, which yes. happens in January, um, based on an expectation that he would take the position ultimately. Uh, I have asked the finance committee for a reserve fund transfer that would allow him to do that this year. Um, but it, there's no real hurry on that, of course. But. Uh, Good. I am acting as though he is going to accept Good. the position Good. in that way. Good. So we have some issues with, with some uh, things to do with new business. Uh, the first one says appoint highway laborer. And we have some news there too. We have uh, interviewed two candidates, but one of them was re recently enough so that we haven't had time to do the, uh, to call the references. and. Uh, so we would like to put that off for a week. Okay. And, and uh, I think we have a very strong candidate. Great. Good. And a representative to the MIAA annual meeting? Yes. Um, this is something that uh, I usually have gone to. And uh, it's just to go to the, the annual meeting and um, accept their annual report, that sort of thing. Not too much, not too big of a deal. If you are planning on going to the MMA meeting, we can sign everybody who wants to go up for lunch. Uh, and it is a good lunch, and you get a nice pen. <laughs> oh, well, a pen. <laughs> but uh, uh, aside from Where that, is it? It's at, at, the, at the conference. It's it, in, but is that in Worcester? Or? It, no, it's in Boston. In Boston. Yeah, at the Heinz. Yeah. Do you want us to make a recommendation? We point you uh, again? Uh, yeah, if you wanted to do that, I could fill out all the paperwork. Right. I'll make a motion that we appoint Tom to the BR town representative, the MIA. And I'd second it. <clears throat> so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank so you. even if one of us goes, you could still right. be the yeah, one that I, we're I, still I, acting I, for the town. Yeah, that'd be great. A approve their annual report. Yeah. Um, if you do want to go, uh, let me know because I... I I have to send this thing in that reserves a, a lunch. A lunch, okay. Yeah. Uh, usually, I believe uh, John is there, but he's working 
at the trade show, which happens at the same time, so he's usually unable to attend. So we have a set of licenses that we need to sign and approve. Where do they go? I have them right here. They're right here. So what action do we need to take on these? Just vote, just vote to approve them one at a time? and sign them, I guess. Can we approve them all as um, one vote? You should probably approve them by the permit holder, so some of them have more than one. Okay. So the first one is a license allowing Barbara Lamas to, uh, she's granted a common victualler's license. I assume that means serving alcohol. Uh, she's not serving food. Oh, yeah. that's serving food? Yes, victuals? We, we did uh, already uh, approve her alcohol okay. license. And, uh, and also a license that she can operate a jukebox. Mm -hmm. I think those are the two for Barbara Lamas. They are. So, can we get a motion? Any more discussion on those? Any, any motion to approve these two? Second. I, then I'd say aye. aye. All in favor? So. Are you going to sign them? So we're going to sign. Yes. We, can. Who is it? Uh, yeah, we all sign them. Right? We all sign them. Can you sign yours? No. Okay. Uh, well, that's an interesting point. Um, actually, you probably... No. Okay, there, well, there's two that are just, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll table that till next week. Okay. Well, John's not here, and he's going to have to sign them too, so... Right, right. And then we have a license for Robert Baker and Helen. No, these are these are the ones we should table. We should. So you table. want to just table these until next week? Yeah, okay, there's no hurry. Easiest. Yeah, yeah. We have till the end of the month. Okay, so we'll table the other three and we'll do them next week. Uh, do we not uh, have a lantern? Common victualler no. in there. We don't. Well, we'll just no. We'll, we'll just do that one. Do next that one next week too. also. My apologies for that. Or did we, did we do that last week? No, that was also the uh, the alcohol license. Oh, oh, that was that's. These are the two for. So this was for Barbara Lamas, and Barbara Lamas. For the yeah. jukebox. Yeah, okay, and then there's only the other three in there. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I should be another one. And then the last item of new business was reviewing uh, a draft audit of the, uh, the, the, the management and the audit management letter. Yeah, so when we have an audit done, we always get a management letter. And... Uh, uh, Jan and I actually reviewed this and approved it, and it has become a final management letter between the time. Um, uh, between last week and this week. Okay. Um, and the, uh, the first thing I would draw your attention to, there's a little letter, an introductory letter at the, fir at the first bit. The end of the third paragraph is the sentence, we did not identify any deficiencies in internal control over financial reporting that we consider to be material weaknesses as defined above. So that's excellent. That's that great. means we passed. That's great. <laughs> uh, that, that's the first key part. Um, uh, I'm just... Um, let you know we got uh, some kudos for um, maintaining our uh, our uh, balances in the general fund and our unassigned fund balance. Uh, just we're we're acting responsibly in in the money that we have, including free cash. Um, and they do say in the third paragraph... So that's the, where they say here it was considered very strong? Yeah, very strong, and they continue to applaud management's efforts in oh. sustaining this ratio. Excellent. Um, 
and uh, Jan certainly deserves the lion's share of credit for uh, all of the good things in this in this report. Uh, at the end of the next paragraph, uh, which is all about the other post-employment benefits trust fund, that's health care for retirees, almost completely. Uh, we have an overall OPEB liability of $2.1 million. And they continue to encourage the town to consider allocating even more surplus and budgetary funds into this trust fund in future years, as the $2.1 million long-term obligation is significant to the town. Currently, we have $20,000 in that um, account, uh, which means that we would have to do that a hundred times mm -hmm. in order to get to two point one million. I do always ask the town to put it in, and uh, because it is considered good financial management, the problem for a lot of small towns is that small towns have always paid uh, as we went. So we pay some tens of thousands of dollars every year mm -hmm. for these costs and we fund it out as a normal part of our operating expenses. And they really should come out of this accumulated fund. And, and it, <clears throat> it has not been a problem for us. And once we put money into this fund, it locks it up. So the sentiment has been, let's spend it on things that we know we need now and uh, not, put, not lock it into this box that we can't ever take it out if we ever need it. Do, do they have a recommendation for what fraction of 2.1 million we they, should have in this fund? They would like it completely funded. They would? Oh, I, yes. I see. Some towns are moving towards complete funding of their OPEB liability. They wow. tend to be larger towns with more free cash. Uh, and they can they can assign well, a larger amount of their free what cash we together. What should look at is our total liability for the one fiscal year and make sure that money gets put in at the end of that year. Well, that's a lot more than $20,000. That's more like 50 or 60, and that has not been something mm -hmm. that has been attractive because in the past. In the, the year I retired, I had a sizable amount of uh, vacation time built up. I had a sizable amount of uh, uh, sick leave built up, and there was a couple of teachers that retired the same year. And it hit them pretty hard yeah. because they didn't have the money to draw from. And, and right, and that's that would be a different fund from this um, OPEB trust fund, which is for retiree health benefits. Mm -hmm. So the 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 ben the other benefits you get from from the town, uh, especially accrued vacation mm -hmm. and things like that, we actually have completely funded on the town side what we owe for that. Um, we fund it every year, right? But that does does it get put in a separate account at the end of the year if it wasn't used? Um, currently, well, we changed the personnel policy okay. for one thing. So, oh yeah, you did. That's what we, we we do have um, <coughs> our current obligations funded. Uh, so that's that's what you did. Yeah, I forgot you changed that. that that's so so it, when we fund. Seventy thousand, or whatever you said, about a year for this. What is it called on the warrant? It, it's uh, employee benefits. Okay. It's it's under it's under employee benefits, and uh, it's it's less than it's less than that. So we we love current employee and past employees. All of their benefits get voted together. As, mm -hmm. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, next thing I wanted to draw your attention to is another OPEB, um, and you know there, there are three different figures that they give, um, and uh, some of it has to do. I'm not sure why there are three different figures. I don't want to speak for them. There, there are obligations and liabilities and net liabilities. Um, <coughs> And the net OPEB liability now, they say, is 2.8 million. Um, and all this, 
Yeah, this is under the second pl uh, second paragraph under new accounting principle. Um, all that they're saying is, in two years, we have to include this on the town's balance books. And what that means is that if we're not working to make it smaller over time, ultimately, some when we go out to borrow, some credit agency is going to say, you need to pay more attention to your other post-employment benefits liability uh, in order for us to give you a higher bond rating and therefore make your borrowing cheaper. You'll be a better credit risk if we know you're not liable for all this money. So if we have it in a fund. Yeah. Yeah. Um, think of it as borrowing $2 million dollars sticking it in a fund and paying it off over 20 years. We tried to do that with the town garage and it was too much for people to do with something that they could actually put their hands on. Right. Um, so they're really going to fight other So it, it has been a hard sell in the past, uh, even on this board. Again, I've recommended it every year, a certain amount, and the board and the finance committee have politely declined to uh, recommend it for for spending. I will continue to propose it. How is the 21000 built up? Uh, we, that was one that was one allocation at a town meeting. When we set up the trust fund, we funded it with $20,000. I see. And it's gained so a little it, interest since then. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and we've never drawn anything out of it. It's, no. No. That, and, you know, that's Another thing that people talk about is, well, why don't we put the money in the trust fund and then pay it out of the trust fund right. as, as we need to? And, you know, in a way that's just an accounting trick, what they really want is for us to save up that amount of money in liability so that we never have to fund it out of anything else going forward it becomes part of this fund and not part of the operating budget. And so what we're doing is we're funding the fund and that pays the expenses. Now, one of the reasons this became the issue that it has is that after the 2007-8 recession, a lot of cities, larger cities, larger towns, that had lots of, lots of investments lost a lot of money and all of a sudden were then really squeezed to be able to pay the retiree benefits. And everyone said, oh, this is horrible, this is terrible, we can't allow this situation to exist. We're going to require towns, to, well, it's still not really required, but it is going to start showing up on the town's balance sheet. So it's a, a, a way to exert pressure on towns to start doing it so they can maintain their credit rate. And that was the genesis of it. And again, most small towns did not have that level of investment. They were not as hard hit, and they're much more capable of paying their retiree health benefits just because the, the, the total the numbers are smaller. Right. Right. And it's still part of our operating budget. And it makes a lot less difference from us if it went from thirty to sixty thousand than for a city if it went from from three million to six million. You know, that's um, so And if you traditionally funded that out of uh, a stock account that suddenly lost a lot of value, then, yeah. then you wouldn't have the money to, in, your, in your budget to pay it. Yes. And so a lot of places were very hard hit, very, very tightly squeezed, and everyone woke up and discovered that health care costs were rising. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yep. I, I think we know that. I think we knew that, and I think we know that right. if, you know, it can't really continue indefinitely on the on the geometric curve it's on now. So some other structural change is going to have to happen at some place, which is another reason not to put a lot of money into it now, 
because this is all based on accounting, which is based on, well, these are the trends. So if current trends continue, we're going to need that much money by the time everybody retires. But if current trends continue in the next 20 years or so, we'll be spending the entire town budget on health care. And we won't be able to pay for anything else. Sounds just like the Medicare fight. So my bet is that current trends aren't going to continue for one reason or another. Maybe towns will provide less health insurance. Um, maybe it's, it's in flux. So there's a, there's a good reason for not putting money into it. But as somebody who's responsible for promoting current good fiscal practices, I always propose it anyway. I think that's fair to both sides. <laughs> and uh, Is anything else good in the in the report? Um, yes. Uh, we're still um, under uh, on the last page under payroll withholding account reconciliation. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that we have a lot more money than we uh, need to or thought we had. And uh, we've been given a path to move forward with that. And Jan is working with Joyce on that. And it's a good problem to have, having too much money rather than having too little money. But we do need to find out why it's happening and correct it. Because so it looks it's like we have about we 50,000 too much. That's the number that I'm seeing. 50,000. Yeah. 60,000, 60, yeah. yeah. Too much? Well, 70, if it said it's all, 76, no. 65,000, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, um, uh, again, initial response from town personnel indicated that they believed the excess funds were erroneously generated in this account as a result of a change in the withholding process. What we need to do is a reconciliation process, and that will, um, that should fix the problem. It also means that we're going to have a little bit more free cash next year. Um, this will drop back to free cash. And, you know, it, it's or a good thing, it but it's, it, it, it's one of the reasons. So that, that, it, it's useful to think about that for two reasons, one of which is it reminds us that free cash is not just what we don't spend in a year. It goes over. It includes other yeah. factors such as this, and that also means that it bounces up and down for various reasons. Here we ha have an overage, which is really nice, which means it'll bounce up next year. But it won't be as much the year afterwards because we won't have this one-time bounce. Yeah, yeah. So free cash is, is uh, a little bit volatile that way. And then right at the end down here, they talk about the Guilford Trust. Yes. And they, they're, they're suggesting we do something different. Uh, yes, it's... Uh, it's how it gets reported to the state, and uh, Joyce can take care of that sure. very easily. Great. Well, it's nice to get a kudos from the state in, in a letter like this. Well, this is this is from the uh, from the audit yeah. audit firm. Uh, but yes, so it's very important. We're, we're 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 in good shape. We've identified some things to pay attention to and. And and fix, but uh, all in all, they they like the way we do things. So items not anticipated forty eight hours in advance of the meeting. I don't have anything. I don't. Good. No. Okay. Uh, you have an an update. I only really have one item, so I didn't even write it down. I've been working with the housing committee, who is interested in one of the Sheehan properties that's for sale. Um, the house apparently uh, would require more money to fix it up to where it ought to be fixed than 
anyone might want to spend, so it's not moving very quickly. Um, somebody would have to build new on that property pretty much, unless they really liked sinking money into historical yeah. restoration. Yeah. Um, and they have asked me to work with them to figure out how they might go about um, persuading the town to buy it at a special town meeting at some point in the future. Of course, there are timing issues because it's for sale and it's on the open market and somebody might come along and buy it, but there are ways to buy real estate that require certain processes that take a certain amount of time, such as having a special town meeting. Uh, we also know that um, the wastewater treatment, uh, the wastewater, the sewer rats, that committee, they, they're going to want a special town meeting uh, once they find out how much it's going to cost to uh, do an engineering study to see w if the town wants to fund the engineering study then maybe it wants to go ahead with the project if it doesn't want to fund the engineering study there's no use going ahead with the project um, so we'll be hearing back from them about how much we would be asking the town for for that uh, conceivably they could happen about the same time uh, but there's more work that they that the housing committee needs to be able to do in order to figure out whether or not they even want to ask the town to buy the land, including how much community preservation money might be used because of the affordable housing component in there, and whether or not they can go ahead and do um, a perk test to find out whether or not they... It, the land could fit 12 units before going ahead with the process. And so I'm in a conversation with the Inspector General's office at the state mm -hmm. to find out answers to those questions. And I really don't have anything to report other than it's in process. In process. But the, the location looks like it would work. They're interested in it, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so that's really all that I have. Uh, I, I, I will also mention, I guess, I, I'm continuing to work on the uh, community compact uh, item. That document behind you there is our signed community compact with the state, where we say we're going to, uh, one of the things we're working on is best practices for IT. And we're working with uh, COG on that and uh, a company which is developing a best practices guide to IT for small towns specifically using Conway as kind of a test case and example so I've been uh, recently activity has kicked up on that and I've been spending Wait. a lot of time mm -hmm. looking at their drafts and proposals and things like that and trying to make them more useful for small towns and Concerns of selectmen. No concerns? Right. No. And I believe we have no mail, except we all got our copy of the, the, the beacon. The beacon. Yeah, the yeah. beacon. Uh, any other announcements? I don't have any. All right. So we're nearing the end here. Uh, the next meeting is going to be next week, December 12th, 7 o'clock. Uh, that'll be posted. And, and then... We do have in our agenda uh, to move into executive session, but I, without John here, I don't no. think we should do that. No. So, right. Right. so then we just need a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Do I hear motion that? We adjourn. Yes. Okay, and I second it. So, all in favor? I. Me too. Thank you. <laughs>